the Kodishnikov system, 500 best video lessons, the Golden Collection, edition 1, number 69, special preparation exercises to practice combat skills. It's reciprocal work, working with sticks. There are two sticks and it doesn't matter if he's swinging like this or like that. The contact has been made. Now I can feel the pressure of his swing. It's his swing vector. Now I must fend him off and make him move along. Now I'm pretending to be attacking him. As a matter of fact, it's not about attacking or defending right now. It's just mutual work. You must start creating challenges for your partner and make them more and more difficult with time. This is a good training exercise, both for your body and your mind. You'll be creating a puzzle and solving it on the go. It's like a game of chess between two partners. There's the beginning, but there doesn't have to be an end. It's not like you finished it and then can go your own ways. No, try enjoying it. It's a great experience. I'm turning it. He's stepping back. I'm attacking. It's not about hitting your opponent. You're not supposed to defeat him right now. I can see he's coming closer, so I'm turning the stick. To what effect? I'm crouching. I'm keeping the contact. One of us is getting unstable, so one or the other must initiate a move. He started attacking while I was chatting with you. I'm turning it down and aiming at his leg. He's taking it into consideration. Now I'm turning the stick around. I'm stepping back and lowering my head. We've been doing this for a while now, and he's still not deflecting. I'm not getting too excited about it. I'm pushing it forward. He can feel the force vector. He knows I'll jab him upwards. He's open and I must get him now. Mind you, your partner's strength and your strength and speed must be similar. I'm beginning to make calculations and estimations for the possible development of the situation. I'm having a lot of calculations in my mind, but I always choose just one option. You must note your strengths and your weaknesses. Look for possibilities to redistribute your efforts while creating more pressure. Let's assume he's in this position and I've caught him. I'm watching his reaction to it. I want to know what he's going to do. Now he's turning the tables around and has an advantage. What's he up to now? Naturally, he wants to strike downwards. I'm doing some hip work. Now look, he's moving like that, but I go ha, and I'm keeping my advantage. He goes ha, and I respond. He goes ha, and I respond ha. I've been trying to catch him several times, but I failed. Now I'm trying a different trick. I swing with a stick from behind. Now I thrust here. You're playing a very complex game here in which your whole bodies are involved. Now I've given him a hint. I broke the contact, but I kept the pressure. Not the real pressure, just a touch. Here's another surprise for him. A thrust between his arms. He's responding. I'm regrouping. He didn't do what I expected him to do. He's grabbed my fingers. I can grab his fingers too. 
not because I'm performing a special secret martial art technique. Now a catch, a turn, some pressure on his arm and shoulder. I can regroup and get a better grip of the stick. Some arm work. Now a crouch and a jab with my elbow. He's fending off with his stick. I want it to be a bit less boring and go, ha, right there. He's protecting himself and I'm doing the same. I pull it like this and he's pushing like that. He's thrusting down and I'm going for his crotch. He's stepping over here and I crouch. Now you must do something like this when you practice. Some of you started jabbing and thrusting, but forgot about the main idea altogether. It's a game, a dance. This exercise will make your brain work at 100% of its capabilities if you do it correctly. Guys, may I have your attention please? This is what we started a workshop with. I'm talking about a universal shaft. What do I keep telling you? The universal shaft and the law of elasticity. Special junctions and X bracing. Why? To avoid coincidence of axes of the torsional moments. I mean to say that if you understand these concepts, you don't have to learn anything by heart. I've presented some books to you where you can find all the necessary information. Besides, the 6th grade secondary school curriculum contains all that you might need as well. You're not 6th graders, therefore, you must be able to see the big picture, especially in light of what we've just been demonstrated to you. You mustn't just look, you must see. Now, try to feel. The exercise allows you to immerse yourself and be busy at all times instead of staying idle. You might think you get stuck within certain limitations, but in fact, there are none. You yourself set your own physical and psychological limitations. This exercise is supposed to open you up to the fullest, and I mean not as much as physically as psychologically. Once you start opening up, the physical component gets easier. You know perfectly well that if there's a block in your mind, a certain obstruction, you can't get around it physically. The moment you get over it, your body catches up and responds to it. Let's take various objects. We've got sticks in this case. A stick is an aggressive. It doesn't mean you can't hurt anyone with it, but at least it doesn't short circuit your brain. You're not scared, you've opened up. Let's take other objects. They're not as long as sticks, but still. Let's try. What's this? It's the same principle, except both of you have to pay extra attention to these things. Why? Because if you lose focus, you can easily hurt yourself. There's one more thing. Don't try to win in this exercise. Besides, I don't want you to balance on the verge of making things dangerous, okay? Now, what do we have here? Suppose I'm attacking. He's dodging. I'm trying to stab him from this side. What do we have here? We're working with two different objects each. Each of those objects is moving independently. In this situation, my weapons are a bit too long, so I have to break contact every once in a while. You must agree on things like that beforehand. I want you to feel each other and move very slowly. If you increase your speeds, even just a little, it can lead to injuries. I mean, this weapon is sharp edged, this one isn't, but in any case, if you lock them and then wrench them out with force, you can hurt your partner. 
Here's another detail. He isn't trying to finish me off once he's locked me. You don't want to chop your partner's arm off. Let it go through. He's attacking me here. I'm fending him off there. Sometimes you forget about one arm, focusing on another one, and then remember about it. You must keep trying to change your body position according to the changing situation. Try to adjust your body movements to your partner's rhythm and flow. This is much more difficult than doing the same thing with a stick. We're doing a bit too fast now. Therefore we must pay our utmost attention while doing this exercise. When you turn your arm, try and see how far you can go with it. Try to get the most out of the contact with your partner. He must be doing the same. Look. My arms, my legs. Entering and exiting. My weapon is a bit too long, so I have to turn it more than the other one. OK, let's not start experimenting here. He's attacking and I'm letting his arm pass. Naturally he won't go further in order to avoid hurting me. He's swinging. I'm letting it pass. I go ha and attack him. He's focused on this arm and he's completely forgot about the other one. He only remembered about it when it was too late. I'm going at him here. A step forward. A step back. He's keeping his arms closed. Yes, close, but only where you let him do it. This is how I want you to do it. No one's attacking or defending. I mean, you're doing it, of course, but it's not a priority. Your priority now is to get a feeling of it.